let's talk about settings in Silhouette Studio. Hi, and welcome back to my craft room. My name is Kelsey, I also call myself Dinosaur Mama, and today we are looking at how to set up your settings to cut in Silhouette Studio. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so happy to be crafting with you. You can find the link to my blog down below in the description where I have over 850 free SVG files, as well as a written tutorial and links to a bunch of other blogs where I teach you how to do all these different projects. If you are new to Silhouette Studio, it can be extremely intimidating, especially if you were a Cricut user first. Silhouette Studio is a lot more in depth. They have a ton more features, especially if you have the business edition. So I am here to go through a very basic tutorial on how to set up your settings, make custom settings, and adjust the settings that are already in Silhouette Studio. So when sending over your mats in Silhouette, it's way different than sending over your mats in Cricut. It's basically one mat. So we're gonna go over how to do that. It's a pretty generalized tutorial. So if you are new, this is going to be extremely helpful, I hope. All right, let's jump into Silhouette Studio. So when you open Silhouette Studio, this is going to be what you see. You're going to have your page set up, which you can access at any time over in the top panel. And we're going to be able to set up our page first. So this is where you should definitely start when you are going to design. So first thing you wanna do is make sure you have your correct machine picked. I am going to set up my Cameo. Your feed type, I usually keep mine on auto. I don't have the sheet feeder, so I keep mine on auto. Now you wanna select your mat. This is important because there is a slight difference if you are using the electrostatic mat compared to if you are using the 12 by 12. It's not a huge difference, but there is a difference. So I am going to use for this tutorial, the 12 by 12 sticky mat. I am not going to use the electrostatic mat. So for your next step, you're going to want to choose your material size. So if you're using scraps, if you're using letter paper, A4, this is where you're going to want to change this. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to keep everything 12 by 12 for paper and for vinyl. So if you wanted to set it up where you're not using a mat, you would use none, and that's where you would be able to feed in your vinyl. So if you're going to be feeding in your vinyl and using none, what I tend to do for that when I go to my, my material size is I just end up using 12 by 24 as a, just an estimate. That's what I use. You can use whatever you want to use. Uh, from there, again, I'm just gonna go back to the 12 by 12. And so these are your different mats. Of course, if you have your pic scan, which I don't have that, that's a mat that you can use and take a picture. Um, it just depends on what you have. So again, I'm gonna use 12 by 12 and I'm going to keep my media size, which is your material size. I'm going to keep that 12 by 12 as well. Now, if you were to change this, this is just a manual way to change your media, media size, right? So there's that. I'm gonna go back in here and just change back to 12 by 12 again. This is just to change the transparency in your background, your orientation, which of course doesn't matter if you're using 12 by 12. And then if you wanted to change the background of your mat, you could always do that here. And then this is if you want to rotate your mat as well where the arrow is. I don't ever change that if I'm going to be honest. Now for print and cut, this is showing basically if I'm using a 12 by 12, but what I do for print and cut is I go up here to the registration marks and you would turn those on. Now I don't have 12 by 12 paper to do, so I would have to go back in here and change this to an eight and a half by 11 and it would change it there. Now you can change all of your registration marks and things like that here all manually. That's one of the great things about using Silhouette Studio over Cricut Design Space. It definitely has better print and cut settings, in my opinion. So that's how you would turn that on. We are not doing print and cut today. I wanted to just show you how I set up my settings for different materials and how to adjust those. So again, I'm gonna go back to my 12 by 12. And I'm gonna show you how to cut different materials. I'll also show you how to cut different materials on one mat. I'm going to make this as short as possible. And of course, you can always ask me questions in the comments below about what you'd like to see further. So let me go ahead and upload an image. All right, so we have an image here that has three layers. I'm just gonna pull those off so you can see them. And 
So when I'm working with an image like this, first thing you're going to want to do is size it. So you can size it right here with your corners. Just make sure you highlight over everything because if you only highlight over one thing, it's only going to resize that one thing. So make sure you highlight over everything. You can always right click and group it if you want to do it that way. And then if you want to group it, you can resize the whole thing up top. Just make sure it's grouped. If not, it kind of goes weird. So from there, you're going to want to ungroup it if you did group it. So I'm just going to make sure it's ungrouped, which it is. And now let's go over to send. So this is where we're going to set up our settings. So I am clicked off of my item, right? And you're still able to move everything around while you're in here. So I am clicked off of it. So right now every layer is going to be cut. So now if I sent this over to my machine, it would, if I, let's say I put in pink vinyl, it would cut the pink vinyl everywhere you see a red line. What I tend to do if I'm working in with a, a layered item like this, what I tend to do is I just pull it off. If it's not on this mat right here that you could see, it's not going to cut. Now, another way to do it is you could go by fill and you can turn things off. So say I wanted to send my black first, I would send that through and I would just unclick these. So you see if they're all on, right? It's gonna cut all of those lines. Now if they're off, it's only gonna cut the black. Then I would, for the next one, I would turn on the pink and then for the next one, I would turn on the last pink and turn off what I don't need. Now, if you're working just in simple, which is probably the easiest way to work, I would just literally take these off and go one by one. So I would start here and I would cut. And so you wanna have it highlighted. It says cut, you can also cut edge. Cut edge is really for if you have a layered design and you're working in print and cut, let me show you. So if let's say I had printed this, right, and I had all these layers stacked, I would highlight over everything and I would just do cut edge. And then you see it's just cutting around the edge. So now if I go into cut, I would take these off, all right, and I would send this through and then I would take it off and send, put this on and send it through. That is one way to do it. Or like I said before, you can go by color and send it through by fill. You can also do it by line, but this is if you set up your lines back on the canvas. If you're gonna go by fill, what's nice about this is, let's say I had my design and I wanted to send it all at once, but I wanted my black to be cut out in glitter paper. I can change these to three different settings and cut it all on one mat. So I could go here and I could go to glitter paper and then I could go here and I could go to plain and I could go here and I could go to chalkboard. I don't even know what that is, but I could go to chalkboard and I could turn them all on and I could set up my mat and put each of the pieces of paper in the corners and I could send this all through all at once. So that's nice what's there, but you wanna make sure your settings are all set up the way you want them. That's how you would do this. Now, if these were layered, right, and we had these like this, and I sent it through like this, layered. I know that's not perfect, but if I sent it through layered and I had all three of these same, three of these clicked on, it would cut all of them in that same spot. So you just have to move these around on your mat if you wanna send them all through. So you can click on one thing and hit no cut. You can also do it that way if you want to and do it by layers. If you did it that way and you did no cut, you can layer them, okay? So you would just have to make sure that you have things <laughs> properly layered. To me, it's almost easier if you're gonna do it by layers, either pull it off the mat and it won't cut so you know it's not gonna cut or work within fill and move it around. That's my personal preference, I would say. So if like I had it like this, I would just go by fill and I would make sure I could physically see it rather than by simple where I'm kind of almost guessing. That's just my two cents on how to set it up. All right, now for the sake of this, I am going to only cut um, a circle for my designs. So we'll do some small circles, but also I wanna show you that you can test your material. So if I have this here, We'll just do black. Now, you can test your material when you go to send, right? 
there's a test down here. You have to load your media first. What I have found when I am cutting is the standard settings that Silhouette has set up do not work with my materials. That's just what I have found. So what I usually end up doing is bumping up my blade depth and my force and usually my passes. Passes are usually my biggest one. I would definitely say bumping up a pass is the way to go um, if you're not sure. So let's start with cardstock plane. Now when I think of cardstock plane, it doesn't give a weight, but the cardstock that I use is anywhere from 65 pound to 80 pound. I am going to show you, we're gonna do the blade depth of three, one pass, and the force of 20, and we're going to use the test feature. feature. Now I'm gonna show you if it cut through or not. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here is that first test cut. It is a little hard to see, but you can see the square with the triangle inside, and it did not even barely cut through. So my test cut did not cut through at all. So I'm going to up the blade depth, I'm going to up the passes, and I'm also going to up the force. I'm gonna start with just three. I usually keep the speed the way it is, and I'm gonna send it through for another test. So here is test number two, and you see it did cut through a little bit, but it did not cut clean. So I want it to cut the square, and I also want that triangle to be a completely clean cut. Our second test, again, is not great. I'm just going to up the force a little bit more now. I'm not gonna change the blade depth because it did go through, it just needs a little bit more. So I'm going to go up by another three and I'm going to test it again. Now here you see I have a nice clean cut. It went through all the way. And if I take it off, my triangle also is clean. So I know I'm going to have a nice good cut when I go to cut my paper. So now if I wanted to save these settings for my cardstock plane, right? I would hit save as and I would start a new one. So you could save it as cardstock plane new or like for you, like you could put in the brand, right? So I could put cardstock textured new. And I'm gonna close. And now if I went here, it's all the way at the bottom. So my, my settings are saved in there as a new setting. So now let's go in and we could do our vinyl. So I do have two in here that I created, but we are gonna go with the vinyl glossy and I'm going to test my settings on my vinyl. Now again, I'm just using the test feature to see. So my cut is kind of hard to see because of the vinyl and also it cut off here, but it did not go through as you can tell. See, it's kind of not, I don't want that struggle when I'm weeding. So I am going to up my stuff. So I'm gonna send the test through again. I'm gonna up the blade depth. Actually, I'm just gonna up the passes on this by one. And here is the test, and again, it's just not a good cut, so we're gonna adjust again. So this is still giving me a lot of pushback, so I'm gonna up my blade depth, it's already on the two passes, and I'm gonna up my force by five, and I'm gonna test again. So here is my third test, and it weeds so beautiful, I'm so happy with it, this is what we're looking for. So this cut beautifully, and so what I would do is I would go up here, I would hit to say, hit save as, and I would change this from vinyl glossy to tech wrap matte. And then from there, you just click off and then hit X when you go up here, vinyl tech wrap matte. So what I've been doing is I just choose something that's a little bit closer. This vinyl, I did choose vinyl glossy. I guess I could have chosen vinyl matte and see if, see if it was better. So vinyl glossy and vinyl matte are the exact same so i would have had to adjust them anyway so just choose something that's close to what you're using and then definitely be using this test button and then you're going to want to save it and it should cut beautifully so that is what i suggest whenever you're doing your settings and cutting a new material and then definitely just start making your own settings as you go along and name it something that you know will will stick out in your head it is a little bit different than when you are in Cricut Design Space when sending. 
They aren't setting it up by mat for you and by color. So you definitely need to learn how to adjust your cut. So if you're working with something like this, again, what I would do is I would just set everything up. And what's great about Silhouette Studio is they have the nesting feature, right? So if I wanted to choose all of just the green stuff, I'm just unclicking all of this. I could go here to nest, hit nest, and it's gonna put everything on my mat for me. So just keep that in mind. You can use nest and then put all your stuff on um, onto your mat. And then when you hit send, you just have to either work with your fill or move things off when you're ready to cut. So once it's off the mat, your machine's not going to cut it. So it almost kind of shows you, right? So it's like, okay, I'm gonna cut this half of this, but if I'm off, I'm not gonna cut any of it. But I do have to say when I am working in Silhouette Studio, I have definitely found that you have to up the pressure and up the passes and the force. Um, but I just have to say that when I was getting started with my Cricut, I didn't understand my settings there either. So <laughs> it's just an adjustment and something that you need to learn. But it's nice because they have the test feature, whereas Cricut Design Space does not. So, all right. Thank you for joining me today as we went over the basic silhouette settings for cutting. I hope this was helpful. If you learned something from this, please do not forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps me so much. Leave me a comment with what you learned or if you wanna see something else in my next tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new crafty videos every single week and share this with one of your friends who is getting into Silhouette Studio and maybe needs a little bit of help. I will see you soon in my craft room and stay crafty.